uh, laser sales. So this is what we are fighting against. And we are gonna go with, into a little bit of theory. And I picked up a couple of uh, things which we need to have in our imagination. So this is the diagram of our lasers and what forces are affecting our ball. Yeah, so we have two uh, main areas, which is the uh, wind force, which is the aerodynamic uh, areas, which is uh, on top of the surface. And then we have water forces, which is underwater and it's uh, hydrodynamic forces. So what is in the water, it's our resistance. So we have to deal with the resistance underwater and we have to deal with the power which is on top of the surface, which is very uh, fine and it's not as brutal as underwater. So who is in between is the person, the sailor, who is in between those two forces. So you are actually balancing the air forces, yeah? And something underwater is your uh, uh, resistance, yeah? So the laser boat is designed for uh, being flat. And uh, if you remember the last um, presentation, I asked you a question, where is the center of mass of the laser? Yeah, but I didn't ask you where is the center of the mass with the, with the rigging, yeah? So I just asked you for the laser. So keep it in mind that now we are putting a rig with the mast, with the sail, with the boom, and putting the person But if you are going to the uh, second drawing on the left column, you can see the re red and green arrow. So when the boat is absolutely flat, yeah, the boat is designed to move through the water in the straight line. Let's remove the sail and just put an engine, yeah, just with the engine without any uh, sail power. If you have a engine at the back and you're just moving forward. If we are gonna hail the boat to the uh, windward side, which uh, all the surface will shift to the green area, the boat will just follow the pattern of the hull and it will start turning to the left, yeah? So that's uh, the hydrodynamics forces which are affecting our boat. And if we are hailing the boat on one side, you will feel the turning on into one direction following the bow shape, yeah? If we're hitting the boat on the opposite side where the half of the hull is out of the water and the other half is just sunk into the water, the boat will follow the pattern of the red arrow. Yeah, so those are the uh, gen If it's pushed, with the engine and I made a strong point here why it's pushed by the engine because the sail is affecting differently the boat yeah so the sail is affecting the powers yeah so when we have more power on the sail you have a stronger force to heal the boat on one side and on that diagram you can see the sail is on the uh, red arrow side so if we have more side force, the boat will heal towards the red side, yeah? So the person who can balance that stuff is the sailor, yeah? So the sailor is someone who is balancing the boat. So it's quite an important uh, unit in the whole sailing stuff. And we should uh, think about uh, that we are the most responsible about the balancing those two forces, the boat and the sail, yeah? Because a lot of people are thinking that, oh, it's all in the hands, just pulling the main sheet and it's all balanced. No, it's you, the person who is in between of everything, yeah? So if we are moving to the uh, third picture, uh, which is right top corner with the three blue arrows. So I indicated a couple of important areas for sailors to think about. So we have a bow, which is touching the water on the water line and I aim it with the star. So that's our area, which is, has to be in contact with the water all the time. And that's a, our ultimate goal. 
to keep this area in the contact with the water because that's where the water line of the laser starts and the more water line we keep in the water the higher speed we have the more things we have in the sky like at the picture at the bottom it all looks cool and a lot of people remember themselves finding uh, themselves in this sort of situation when the boat is completely jumping out of the sea because of the waves but probably most of the people remember what's going to happen next the boat is going to stop to zero after that jump so being in the contact with the water is very important and to help to achieve that we always have to imagine ourselves like being at that point where is uh, i'm aiming with the star to always think about the bow being in touch with the water no matter what sort of uh, conditions of the waves we have they always adopt your uh, body movements towards this towards aft and forward yeah as you see there are three arrows from the sailor's position and they are all moving aft up and outside why there is no movement forward if you can see that the guy is uh, from Germany, the world champion from 2020, is actually out of the uh, water in the sky, in the air, but the bow is falling down and he's uh, hiking all the way back. It means that the gravity is go uh, down. We don't need to move forward to to press the bow to go down faster. It will fall itself with the gravity. So always remember about this part because a lot of sailors are thinking that they need to move aft and forward. There is no forward movement in the laser. It's only aft to help the bow to climb the wave. And then the gravity will do the job. So the initial hiking position is more than enough to uh, help the bow to go down. So any questions on these slides because it's a lot of theory here and i'm pretty sure people have some uh issues with this stuff oh we are up to 100 uh participants that's a good news um we are uh, reaching the limit which uh, i'm having only possibility to facilitate 100 people that's good uh, to see so i'm moving to the next slide and this is the uh, base hiking uh positions and the area of interest where we have to uh, look for when we are looking from outside or when we want to improve our hiking so hiking is something what is really specific for the laser and there is no such a exercise in the nature which is uh, creating this sort of exercise it's only in sailing or in the hiking bench it's very specific exercise so to develop the strong skills in it you have to be either on the water or on the shore in the hiking bench to improve the hiking uh, strength and resistance to the pain but when i'm in the coach boat and looking from the back i'm always picking up three areas yeah and I would start from the left, where is the 4.7 sailors, uh, and I'm looking at the hiking strap tension. Ideally, we need to um, adjust the hiking strap to the most tension that the legs are always in the contact with the boat, because that's your first point where the body is in contact with the boat. So you have to be really locked and understanding that this is the uh, area through where you feel the hull and all the power. So you have to be in total contact because I quite often meet sailors who have a really loose hiking strap. They try to do a lot of activity in the boat and it doesn't affect the boat at all. So the first area you have to look for is the hiking strap where we tighten it. And then if it's not comfortable, if the calves are feeling sore and it's not enough space to move we just slightly release so we start from really tight and we release just for the comfort but the goal is always to have calves really low to the deck a uh, really small gap uh, between the knees and the deck and ideally the bum higher up on the deck 
So then we are shifting to the second picture where we are looking on the hip area. So that's where we have to uh, put the biggest emphasis, yeah? So the first part is the hiking strap, and I suggest for the people to extend themselves to the uh, very end and use the toes. So pointing toes is very important because a lot of sailors are loving pointing uh, toes up into the sky and you, you just basically don't uh, use all the leverage of your body. That's another five, seven centimeters of your height, which you can extend out of the boat. So try to um, stretch this part and this can be you, uh, developed on the hiking bench where you just extend yourself further and further out and your anchor starts to be stretchy and start to point down. That's very painful at the beginning, but that's the same as a ballet where the, the girls have to stretch their um, anchors to be able to stand on their uh, toes. Yeah, so we have to do the same exercise. So we are going to the second picture where you can see very high uh, hips and there is a lot of tension. So remember about this stuff where uh, we have a lot of uh, tension in the uh, legs and the quads. That's where we have to put the maximum effort to put uh, tension on the boat, yeah? So we start from the quads and hips, not from the ups, not from the leaning out, it's quads where we put the biggest uh, tension first. With the open shoulders, you have to be just upright, but with the straight legs. That's where we are developing our base technique for the hiking. And I suggest for the people now during the um, lockdown to use the hiking bench, just keep yourself upright with the um, locked legs. That's where we are gonna get our uh, pain resistance and strength for the quads, yeah? And then when it's all settled in the picture one and two, then we can go to the picture three where we start to work with the upper body and start to extend it as far as possible. But if the one and two is not uh, in the perfect condition, there is no meaning about uh, going all the way out with the upper body, with the bent knees, with the, uh, no tension in the legs. It's all gonna be inefficient. So try to develop the first and second picture and then move to the third one. Because a lot of people think that they're all the way out hiking, but with the bent knees, and that's efficient. No, it's not. So go for the first two uh, things and sort them out. And I added a little picture at the bottom. That's uh, Olympic gold medalist from UK, Paul Goodison. So he was doing an ad for uh, Volvo. And it means one thing here, it's like day and night think about hiking, yeah? Even when you're driving to, to the uh, boat park, you are thinking about hiking. It's, it's kind of like their professional way of uh, behaving. So you guys have now opportunity to develop your hiking strength, use your hiking bench and uh, keep working on it because soon we are going to be on the water. You have to be ready for it. So we are moving to the next slide. <laughs> it's a lovely picture of uh, Maltese uh, storm. And always ask yourself the conditions you are gonna sail today, yeah? From understanding what conditions you are sailing, you can develop or you can put a pattern in your head of how you are gonna uh, behave today in the boat on the upwind, yeah? So there are different strengths which you can divide in four groups of the wind so let's say from zero to eight knots it's a light wind where we do minimum action in the boat we do maximum um, powering our sail and uh, trying to be really smooth and uh, understanding that you shouldn't be bothering the sail you all have to go with the flow then we have eight to twelve knots when the things have are changing and we are starting to think about our additional body movements. If it becomes a little bit wavier or we need to start to think about settings and 
how much we are going to be depowering the cell or powering. Ideally, we still to need, need to work with the maximum power in the cell up to 12 knots. But don't forget, not everyone can handle it. So we start to adjust the cell settings, which we talked on the first lesson. Yeah. And then 12 to 18 knots is our working conditions where we are most exciting, excited to race. Most of the people call it uh, champagne sailing, which is nice medium breeze where you have to work hard, where you have to fight hard, and you have a lot of power in the sail. A lot of people are coming from different uh, places in the world, and some people are used so much for that stuff, for windier stuff, and a lot of people are more used to the lighter stuff. So it doesn't matter, but remember where you grew up, it's where you sail the most. And if most of the time you have light winds, so you are much better than the people who are coming from the strong wind place. So keep it as your advantage, but always develop the things which you are missing, like heavy breeze. And whenever you have an opportunity to sail in heavy breeze, try it on. And then we have a super strong wind, 18 plus, yeah? If there are some Australians here, they will laugh on me. But in Europe, 18 plus, it's already like breezy stuff. So uh, regarding the waves, we have three uh, conditions where we can adapt our uh, upwind technique. Yeah, so we have a flat water, we have a choppy water, and we have a big ocean or sea swell. So for each condition, we adopt a different style of sailing. Yeah, if it's a flat water, reduce our movements because there is no resistance from the water side and if there is a, some chop we start to add some motion from our upper body since chop is becoming our resistance to the boat and we have to help the boat to go through the chop and then we have a swell which is affecting our uh, overall power in the sail because in the swell, when we are sailing upwind between the waves and on top of the waves, we have two different winds, which can vary sometimes depending on the size of the wave, but it can vary up to four to five knots of uh, strength. Between the waves, we are lower and we have less wind. On top of the wave, we are higher and we have more wind. So it's very important to keep it in mind. And from there, you can start um, thinking about your style of sailing, yeah? And the last part, I'm also mentioning the wind type. I, I divided it in two ways, just offshore, onshore. But of course, we have uh, lake sailing, super shifting, oscillation. But I, I just divided it in two parts. Um, more steady wind and more shifty wind, yeah? Where you can adapt your uh, upwind uh, technique, yeah? When it's more... Uh, steady wind you're more focused on the speed when it's uh, more shifty you're more focused on the keeping the boat flat and just uh, doing the wind readings yeah because in the uh, shifty conditions if you are just focused on the speed and you don't keep your head outside of the boat you can be the fastest person on earth but just missing the shortest course and doing the same uh, awful stuff as the guy who is much slower but just taking the good uh, wind readings and uh, sailing the shortest course. So this is an important area where you can switch your focus, yeah? Because a lot of people are coming into uh, shifty conditions and they just focus on the speed and then they get uh, really frustrated because the results are not matching their expectations and just because they didn't set up their brain for the right conditions. Yeah, so always ask yourself what type of conditions we sail today. So if there are any questions, I'm just... Okay, I think uh, the questions, uh, Vishnu is answering some of the simple questions. If um, you have some interesting one, uh, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask on the um, video conference, okay? So I'm moving uh, to the next slide. And I just uh, put some videos into the presentation. They're gonna be lagging a bit. 
So expect some delays, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play it through, which is gonna be quite delayed. And then I'm gonna go into slow motion and go through uh, and talk through it, yeah? So this is the light wind conditions where we are sitting in uh, flat water and below eight knots of wind. As you can see, there is a very little movement. The sailor is quite settled in one position and just slight um, balancing of the sail power with the uh, upper body, with the shoulders. Just find a comfortable position with very little steering and uh, it's gonna be enough to go fast in the light wind. So I'm gonna go in the slow motion and you can see that we just try to keep the boat upright. We cannot keep it all the way flat because we need a little bit of um, nice shape for the aerodynamics. Remember one thing that if the mast is gonna pass the 90 degrees towards you, you will just lose the nice shape of the sail and uh, you will have a broken flow around the sail, which is gonna affect your speed immediately. So try to keep the boat maximum to the upright position, but sometimes with a little bit of leeward heel in the light stuff is uh, also uh, good, especially in the choppy conditions because you have space to uh, flatten the boat and get, generate the speed again. But as you can see in the flat, Water, we do minimum movements with the, uh, with the body and just try to keep the sail as, as smooth as possible and try to reduce by our movements any effect on the sail. That's the ultimate goal in the light wind, not to... You can see there is minimum steering and minimum sail, sail uh, movements with the mast. That can be developed in just uh, sailing in the light wind. And whenever you are uh, having an opportunity, always take it because it's the best um, way to develop the fine feelings of um, sailing. Because if you are getting good in the light stuff, it's much harder than to get good in the windy stuff because in the windy stuff is about how much physically you are prepared while in the light stuff we have to have this feeling of the fine balancing and that's quite an important part and i suggest people to do it okay so people are happy with the video so i'm gonna uh, shift to the next one so I added some uh, videos from 4.7s and radios because we have a lot of people from different classes and in the past I was just mentioning the standards and um, I, I was just uh, trying to keep everybody happy and here I added with uh, some 4.7 sailing. So now we are shifting to the new, sorry. So now we are uh, moving to a new conditions where we still have light wind but more choppy conditions where the sailor have to uh, balance a lot with the whole body weight and it has to be a very active movement and we have to shift our weight all the way out and in and to keep the rig as steady as possible. This is the ultimate goal in the choppy conditions is to keep the rig steady because the boat, uh, the, the water itself moving a lot, our boat so it can affect our rigging too much so here we have to adapt with our body as you can see the whole body weight is moving towards the edge of the boat and then when the boat starts to get a bit flatter the sailor is moving inside the boat and it's a continuous job to keep the rig as steady as possible so that's one of the thing in the choppy condition. And now you can see the sailor moved in and again moving out. So that's a more difficult condition where a lot of people are struggling without understanding what they need to focus on. So you always focus on maximizing the uh, power in the sail and at the same time to keep the boat in the same uh, healing angle. Because a lot of people are between a small chop, they try to go too much leeward, too much windward, too much leeward, too much windward. So our ultimate goal is to balance the weight 
that the rig is always steady. So I'm looking from the back and I want to see the rig always in the same position going through the bumpy road. Okay? So that's quite an interesting uh, thing to see. And to help the bow, if you are remembering about the first uh, slide, there was a star at the bow. So this is the time when you are always focusing on that star. Always focus on the uh, bottom of the bow, which is touching the water first. And here you have to think that you have to do everything possible that the bow is in the contact with the water. Okay. So we are going to the next slide and we have a small increasing of the wind and decreasing of the wave. So I choose this video because I really like the uh, way the sailor is steering and it's uh, very linked with the whole body movements and with the main sheet. So overall the picture is very good. I hope people can get the good quality of the video, but let's go through it. As you can see, all the steering is just a continuation of the bow uh, going through the weight. And through every steering, the body is also adapting. And the main sheet work for keeping the boat flat. That's the ultimate goal of uh, going with the boat at the fast speed to link all those things together. But it's very important to have, if you are developing, still the upwind technique, it's very important to break it into three parts. What should I engage first? So if you want to break it in three parts, I would are engaging your body first, then you are engaging your main sheet second, and the third part is the last part is the steering and, and uh, working with the rudder. Because if you start with the steering and then you add body and main sheet, so you are start starting with extra drag and then you are uh, working with the wrong things. But if we can start with thinking first is the body balance, second is the main sheet training, and the third one is the rudder, that's where you can develop in the, a very good um, style, which is gonna be always fast. I can see a lot of people start to draw and losing the fun part. But um, both of these uh, 4.7 and the radio sailors there, uh, they've been uh, medalists at the World Championship in. 2019, so that's a good example of uh, fast sailors in, of that generation. So you can see that the steering is linked to the body movements first. So first he's moving with the body and then slightly uh, bearing away to just to power up the whole sail. Why he needs to power up the whole sail? Because he's slightly uh, depowering the sail before to keep the boat flat and then powering it again. So also looking at the wave is bearing away as soon the star point of the bow, the bottom bow, as soon it touches the uh, upper part of the wave, that's the moment of the bearing away because the, the stern will be a little bit delayed and it will have an effect a second later so it's better to start it in advance and then the stern will match the pattern of the waves because remember the head is in the star point and the rudder is at the end and it's a four meter boat so we always have a delay of the turns it's very very smooth steering here it's a quite dynamic but it's just matching the the whole motion of the powering the sail and and body movement. So any questions uh, uh, till the, that stage? I'm gonna shift to the... No, no questions, uh, we leave it for the end and we are gonna go uh, to the next slide which is medium wind. We, we've been through the light wind with a chop with the flat water, we've been through the medium wind with the choke, and now we are talking about medium wind with the swell, which is quite a tricky part, where we were talking about that between the waves there is less wind on top of the wave, 
more wind. So what's our main focus is do we hike too much and we end up with less power between the waves and we just uh, sink in the water with our upper body or we just adapt our body movements towards keeping the rig, rig always upright. So that's one of the examples, probably, oops, sorry. It's one of the examples of 4.7 sailor, really good hiking, but as soon as the wave approaching from the side, the sailor always have to go inside the boat to keep the boat upright. So as soon as there is a space for hiking out, he's hiking, but always ready for not dipping with the upper body into the sea. Otherwise it can end up as a big resistance. So that's where a lot of people are struggling because not often we sail in these conditions, but um, we have an opportunity here and we've trained a lot in that stuff. As you can see, there is space for the upper body to hike all the way out and the sail is fully powered. So the sailor is hiking all the way to keep the boat flat. As soon as he touches the top of the wave, yeah, he passes the top of the wave, but he needs to slightly lift his upper body. Otherwise, if he would be uh, hiking flat, he will end up uh, just dipping with his upper body into the water and stopping the boat completely. So here we have to adopt a very um, dynamic upper body movements to be ready to be inside the boat and to be outside of the boat. Like now we are losing the power. We have to tighten the main sheet and get inside and the boat is still upright. Then we are hitting the next wave and again, and be ready to be inside. Otherwise, if you don't go inside, you will end up smashing the waves like he did uh, this time with the um, hips. But the dynamic should be um, very quick and always looking on the start point and plus looking uh, above the bow, what's gonna hit the upper body as well, because there are a lot of side waves which we can sailors we can be affected by them and a lot of people are actually not looking to this part not looking at the waves which are approaching from the side and the upper body is stopping by diving into the waves so be um, switched on and be accurate in here and we can work with a lot of main sheet trimming by depowering to keep the boat flat and by powering between the waves so that's the medium wind and from here we are moving to the strong wind uh it's a radio sailor as well and here we are focused more on keeping the boat flat rather than hiking hard so i would say from the personal experience that it's harder to sail in the 18 knots when you have the maximum power of the sail and the maximum um, hiking rather than super windy where we depower through the main sheet and it's just the timing of depowering the, the sail to keep the boat flat. So it's a little bit easier to sail in super strong wind, but we need to be efficient with the main sheet work. And the main goal is just to avoid any leeward hill. So you can depower the main sheet as much as possible to not to be affected by the uh, leeward hill. So we go to this video and it's another video of the quite a, quite a strong sailor. He also uh, finished in top, top five of the both world championships. Yeah, but you can see here that the goal is not to hike hard. The goal is to work with the main sheet and the power of the sail, just to keep the boat flat and steer through the way. That's most difficult example because we have here the swell, the chop, and the strong wind. So I combined in one video everything in one go where we have to be focused on uh, main sheet, on the wave, on the body positioning. And here our ultimate goal is to keep the boat flat, not to dive with the upper body and the ass into the water. Yeah, so we have to have an, um, quite a high position. And 
also not to forget the pole dimension. So maybe here we can improve slightly in that video, pulling the main sheet back, but knowing the condition, it was um, above 25 knots. So it wasn't easy to keep the boat fully powered. So we had to uh, compromise with the main sheet quite a lot. And as you can see that there are only aft movements, very few uh, movements forward. And uh, that's from the, our first uh, slides where I explained that the bow will drop down itself. You don't need to help to go to the bow down. Okay, so moving to the next slide. Um, I was mentioning about uh, these parts in the uh, first uh, meeting, but I will just uh, keep it as a reminder that um, we have this twist in the upper uh, part of the sail and we also have a bent mast which is created by uh, sailors putting an effort into hiking. And I've noticed a lot of times people are uh, aiming for the mark, they want to go into pointing mode or they want to, uh, to avoid the leeward boat and they want to go higher and they start to hike harder in the medium light condition. So what is happening when you hike harder, the, the mast at the top start, starts to bend more, yeah? And we actually lose the flow of the wind over the sail at the top part, and we actually depowering the uh, top part of the sail, and we start to sail in the lower angles, and that's where people are doing a lot of mistakes. If you are aiming for pointing mode you want locked in the boat yeah if you want to go for speed you, you can hike harder and then you understand that you are bending the mass and the boat will go lower angle itself yeah so that's where the people are doing the most mistakes that they are stuck with the lever boat and they're trying to pinch a little bit but at the same time hiking really hard and um, losing the space and, and, and losing the height. So if you are aiming for pointing, reduce a little bit the leverage of hiking to straighten the mast and keep the power at the top of the sail. So that's a tip for the um, people. So this is the um, reminder from the uh, first lesson with the sail settings and um, trimming of the sail where people can just recap and just remind yourself what sort of sail settings we are using for uh, different conditions uh, for, with the Cunningham and Kicker. We had it before, I'm go not gonna uh, stay long on this uh, slide, I'm just gonna keep it as a reminder because here the subject is uh, the upwind speed, uh, the upwind technique and part of the upwind technique is also trimming the sail in the correct way. Okay, so moving to the last slide of the upwind technique is also the trimming and uh, reminding yourself about the sail shape because we are talking about the hiking, but the hiking is all related to the amount of power you have in the sail. So we always aim to have the maximum power in the sail and how to achieve it by uh, reducing the Cunningham and reducing the uh, kicker, but at the same time, how much we can handle it, yes? So as long as we can handle it, we do not touch it. As soon we are uh, losing the control of our boat, we always have to oversteer to keep the course. It means you have too much healing, which is turning our boat into the wind, and we have to always adjust the course, which slows us down. And it means we better compromise with the sail settings rather compromising with the rudder. And that's important for some of the kids because uh, even the others, sometimes they're uh, so stuck in um, thinking about other stuff that they just forget the basics and it's good for them to remind this stuff. So I'm moving to the last slide and uh, we are not gonna be focusing so much on the reaching, but the reaching is a, a I would say it's one fifth of the whole uh, regatta. So it's a small part, but it's an important part. 
not to lose too much. You cannot gain a lot, but you also shouldn't lose anything on the reaching. So as you know, we don't train the reaching like 90% of our time. We also train it probably on the way home or on the way out or during the warm up or during some races. But that's not a crucial part because it's related to um, upwind. But we forget one thing, it's also related to a little bit of higher speeds. And wh where I want to point now is thinking about this star point, which is touching the water. It's moving more aft toward the mast. So we are helping it by lifting the bow with our upper body. Yeah, we are helping it to uh, move all the way towards the stern, to the flat uh, surface of the uh, boat. And this is all for the planning conditions because that's the only time when it, uh, the boat is really affected is when we are in the planning condition in the reaching. When we are planning, if everyone knows what is planning, it's a speed when the bow goes really up and we start to go really fast. So in the planning mode, we have to uh, remove the uh, centerboard surface as much as possible because we are doing a lot of uh, angles change with the, with the bow and instantly the uh, centerboard is becoming our um, like friction, which is not allowing us to change the course uh, quickly. So in the planning conditions, we want to rise the centerboard as high as possible and since we are um, going into the speed mode we always uh, trim the sail that the boat of the tail tails next to the mouse are flying parallel and this is more probably the most to pay attention because a lot of people are gaining more speed then they hit the wave the boat stops and from planning to stop mode it's a uh, like minus two knots of speed and when you stop, the, the sail becomes uh, super over trimmed. And that's where people have to pay attention the most on the tail tails because the tail tails are uh, on the both sides and it's the most accurate uh, help for us to trim the sail on the different speed. So I would suggest for people to uh, pay attention the most on the tail tails in the reaching, no matter what conditions you have because that's the biggest help for your sail trimming. So I'm moving to the next slide, which is um, a little bit of uh, things for the upwind to keep in mind. If you can see at the top picture, the guy has a really strapped um, ankles and um, crossed, crossed feet. I see this uh, stuff a lot with a lot of sailors. It's the way they develop their skills. But this is one of the um, way to injure yourself for the future if you abuse it too much. So I saw some top sailors, they have uh, the ankles next to each other and parallel with the toes pointing down. And a lot of kids develop this uh, uh, technique of uh, keeping the toes to touching each other but the ankles are spread and later on they have a little bit of problems in that area also you are not engaging um, the all the quads so there is a little bit of slacking with the other muscles and it can end up in a, a big trouble so try to uh, always remind yourself keep your ankles together and point with the toes down that will help you in the future with your health. And also you will not have so much pain as this guy, but I think the one of the reasons he had to struggle because of the uh, developing this technique and then it's very difficult uh, with the age to change it. Also understanding what muscles we are using during the uh, hiking, it's uh, quite crucial because we have a lot of injuries in the spine and, and lower uh, bark in the vertebral and mostly the people are thinking about, oh i'm using my core so i have to have a strong core but actually we are using the hip flexor which is the muscle joining between the knee and all the way around your uh, spine so that's the main uh, muscle we are using during the hiking and that's what we should uh, have the stronger it's a big one it's um, 
not that difficult to uh, develop it because it's a very big one. But the biggest issue with the sailor is they are not stretching that muscle at all or rarely doing it enough. And as you can see, the tighter it gets, it puts more tension on the uh, lower uh, spine, on the vertebral, and that's where all the uh, issues are starting. So make sure that after each hiking session, you stretch enough and this is the area which is affecting your uh, lower spine. But the core is also important because the core is the part which is keeping the posture all together. So those two things are just linking efficiency of our hiking, but the core is keeping the posture and reducing a little bit of um, uh, tension on the hip flexor. So you can see this guy is stretching and what muscles are used. And this is the muscles, as soon as we are pointing down with the toes, this muscle will uh, start to uh, expand and it will grow big because we compress it. And that's where we uh, start to use our uh, body the most. So this picture is very important to have an understanding. What are we using and where this muscle is linked to, sorry. Where is this muscle linked to? Because a lot of people think, oh, I have a sore back. Why it's sore? Maybe because you've overused your quads and hips and after a while when you don't stretch it and you keep using it for a week in the heavy breeze, it ends up being so tight that it puts a lot of tension on the spine and that's where you have a lot of uh, pain. I can see the, that people have a lot of uh, feelings about this moment because probably this feeling of uh, having a lot of pain in the lower back after a week of uh, heavy breeze sailing. So keep it in mind and stretch it as much as possible after every session. Yeah. Thank you for listening. I tried uh, to keep it a little bit shorter today to have a more compressed and um, to keep everyone engaged. So thank you for um, attending it and uh, moving to the questions. I'm uh, gonna unmute everyone and people can start uh, questioning here. Unmute all. Hey. So the couple of questions. Alex, it's me, Leon. Yeah, there is a Judy asking about um, uh, the question is like you don't want to uh, get a lot of healing and um, at the same time point to the winner mark. I, I know a lot of master guys are actually loving the fact of sailing with a big hill yeah. and just sitting. And uh, so people uh, who are not involved, please stay mute because I unmute everyone. So I'm just answering some questions. For Judy, um, the, this is a, an, a, a small uh, change of your style. We are not talking about completely getting into uh, pointing mode through the big hill. There is a fine difference between keeping the boat absolutely flat with a lot of uh, uh, tension on the upper, like hiking with the shoulders all the way down or just keeping the shoulders upright. That's already a huge difference in your pointing angles, but the legs should be always locked in and fully engaged with the boat. That's the most critical part because I think a lot of guys are thinking that I'll just uh, start sitting inside, I'll get a lot of height. But remember, there is a VMG, which is uh, also quite important. So we are not uh, avoiding that moment. So we are not stopping hiking to get more height. You are also losing the speed. So you should find the fine balancing between ultimate hiking with the upper body down, like in some of the pictures, where you can just keep your posture upright and you get a little bit of better angle 
towards the upwind market. Okay? No worries. Um, there is a question from Amit. So for the hiking, uh, we've been talking uh, in the fi fitness session about uh, getting fitter overall. And I saw actually a lot of fit guys who were jumping in the laser and they could not handle the pain of the hiking. And then I saw some unfit uh, sailors overall on the shore, but because they sailed so much and they're so much more resistant to the pain and they uh, perform much better. So if you really want to focus on performing well in sailing, you have to do overall fitness, which is giving you an opportunity to develop the whole body. But then you do a specific training for sailing is the hiking, which you can do right now during the lockdown on the hiking bench, on the uh, Swiss ball, just hooking yourself with the legs to the any table or anything. You can do it uh, in the boat itself, which is just sitting on the land. If it's in your backyard or just to do the same specific uh, exercise as hiking on the boat and it should be done regularly at least 10 to 15 minutes uh, five times a week and of course it, it needs to be stretched a lot afterwards yeah that you are just developing the ability to resist the pain because at the end we don't have any pain it's just a message to the brain that we can't do it but with the time the more we practice it it starts to eliminate this factor and there is no more message to the brain that uh, it's a pain it's not a pain it's just a which is not used to and how we can develop it just make it more often and then you will uh, get used to it There is a comment from Lion about uh, wall seat. It's also a good exercise. Um, a lot of optic uh, kids are using it and uh, it's uh, also good for the laser. But um, ideally we have to uh, copy the environment of the laser bow. Yeah. So there are some for strength, it's lunges and other stuff, but for specifically for the laser, I would suggest 10, 15 minutes a day trying to copy the same style as on the water. And that will help you so much when you come on your first session after this long lockdown. Hopefully we are all gonna be safe and finish soon with all this uh, mess which is happening all around the world. And we are all looking forward to be out again and start racing as soon as possible. Thank you very much for uh, your attention and see you next Tuesday with me and next Thursday with uh, our special guests. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. No worries. Alex, would you send the uh, presentation to us, please? Uh, yes. Um, I'm going to send it as a, a link. Uh,